Hey oh, Omni Dogs and Omni Kittens. It's Omni Dog here with an overview and review of the Joker Bronze Age Omnibus. And this was a viewer request, and I've been sort of on the fence about getting this book anyway. So when a viewer named Retro with a three in his name instead of the E, so I'll call him Retro Three. When Retro Three um, asked me to overview it he sort of talked me into it too i was like i don't know the bronze age do i really want to and he said well it's got neil adams art in it and i'm like yeah that's true and then i started thinking about jim apero art and dennis o'neill wrote it so i decided to get it and here's the overview it's just a black book uh, so we'll take the dust jacket off and yes, I have already relaxed the spine. We can take a look, quick look at the spine. Push this out of the way. The back of it, and it also includes the last previously unpunished Joker 10. Here's, they do it Marvel style, where they have the issues included. And there's actually a lot of famous Joker stories in here. So I think this is a good solid book. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, the binding first. I think the binding's fine. See, it's got a um, eye hole that's nice and the it's sticking right to it. It looks like it's a combination of glue and sewn, like they sewed it in and glued it in. Uh, I'm not the best expert on binding. I just know when it comes apart. So <laughs> it looks good and I've, I've relaxed it. So it's holding up uh, just fine. And um, we can go ahead and get this started because I've yapped long enough already. So we start out with the Bronze Age omnibus. And for the most part, you're gonna find that this joke, here's the table of contents. Uh, Denny O'Neill writes a lot of them. Bob Haney writes some of them. Those are the brave and bold issues. Uh, the Joker one through 10 uh, is a mixture of Dennis O'Neill Elliot S. Magan, Martin Pasco, Denny O'Neill, Elliot S. Maskin, and the Joker 10 is the writer Martin Pasco. That's the issue that's included in this. Then a lot of Brave and Bold and Batman. Denny O'Neill does the Batman. And Jim Aparo does a lot of artwork. Um, Steve Englehart and Marshall Rogers, they had a famous issue together. Uh, this one, and let's see, then Len Wein, Lane Wayne is the writer for one, Jerry Conway, Paul Levitz, Paul Levitz, and we've got, so there's a lot of good writers and a lot of good artists, and it's a fairly thick book. I mean, for a Bronze Age book, I mean, this is pretty thick. So, we can get on to the artwork and the, the writing. Okay, here we will look at Neil Adam. Well, no, we're going to have a Justice League story first. Snapper Car Super Trader. But then we can get into this famous issue, Neil Adams. This is kind of whoop. This is kind of the reintroduction of the Joker into um, the Bronze Age, and that's a famous cover. Neil Adams did it, and as far as I can tell, this does not look re-inked and recolored. This looks to me like these are the regular. Um, the regular Bronze Age inks. 
Um, so I don't think it's been re-inked and recolored by Neil Adams. They, as far as I can tell, this has been left alone. Um, and this is sort of the debut of the long face Joker, as far as I can tell. And that's who's going to be in this whole book is long, long jaw Joker or long face Joker. Um, and he, he's not in this book. I think we've established that this is the original Neil Adams art. So that's good. Dennis O'Neill story. And he is a killer uh, in this book. Um, but he's still just sort of, uh, I don't know. He's not. Well, I'll get to my point here. See, there's a famous picture by Neil Adams. That looks like the original colors to me. Um, that is a famous cover. Um, and then it's followed up by Jim Aparo, who I thought was uh, a good follow-up to Neil Adams. If, if Neil Adams was the end of the Silver Age, the beginning of the Bronze Age, Batman artist, um, then I think Jim Aparo was a worthy successor because I like his artwork. Um, he's, he's a murderer. The Joker is. But he's not super deep and complex like Alan Moore or Scott Snyder or Tom King's or, uh, gee, let me think. I, I, I feel like the real um, deeply complex twisted, like Scott Snyder in his latest Justice League book, wrote a really, I feel, wrote a really nuanced Joker in that book. Very deep, um, deeply complex. He wasn't just, he was, the Joker he wrote was very, um, this is turning into a review of Justice League, but uh, this is, this Joker is not going to be that complex, not going to be that, uh, he's pretty much face value that he's just a psycho twisted clown. Um, and so here the Joker, the Joker had his own series, one through ten. And in this one, it stars Two-Face in stories by Dennis O'Neill, art by Irv Novick and, and uh, Dick Giordano. So th these these are not going to be the um, the Joker you're used to now, where he's um, fairly interesting, uh, not to be. Um, you you don't know what his next move is. He's always thinking three steps ahead. This this Joker is a little. Uh, now he's not as goofy in the sixties. That was goofy Joker. This is a bridge between goofy Joker and sadistic twist, sadistic twisted psycho killer clown that he is now. Uh, but, but, a, a deeply motivated, deeply well thought out killer as he is now. So this serves as sort of a bridge between goofy 60s and the 2000s Joker that, that grew to be even more terrifying because now he's uh, capable of rational thought and the fact is he just likes to kill. So um, this is um, a Joker that is twisted and is thoughtful. Uh, and more by thoughtful, I mean he's... <laughs> capable of um, rational thought, not that he's going to send you flowers on Valentine's Day or send you a piece of cheesecake for your birthday. Um, this is a Joker that is, I would say these stories are, for the killer that he is, long-jawed Joker is um, kind of fun. St still fun, not deadly serious. These still have a little... Uh, flavor of um, 
kind if if you've got an evil killer clown that can be fun, that's what these books are. Um, that's what this book is, rather. So these I do remember these books um, back in the seventies, and Superman makes some appearances. Luther, of course, is in here. Um, so it's a Joker book. So you need to be ready to read a lot of Joker. As far as reading this book, um, I would take it a few stories at a time. Because it's an awful lot of long-faced Joker um, to read at once. Because these do sort of all have the... Saint, look at that jaw. <laughs> it's just funny. These do, uh, and there's the Joker mobile. Let's see if I can find that Marsh, famous Marshall Rogers where he's pulling the fish guns. So this is a it's it's a nice collection, a well diversified collection, tons of Joker, tons of DC Comics presents, Brave and Bold. And let's see, I think Marshall Rogers is later in here. Whoa, look at this. Who drew this? Gene Colan and Bob Smith. That is that is a very long faced Joker. Now these are some there are some story arcs in here which are multiple issues and they were pretty interesting. I enjoyed them. Vicky Vale is in here. And let's see if I can find that. I should have found it beforehand. And here's Jason Todd. A little more Vicky Vale. So this is a book that's full of a lot of good stories, uh, a lot of good art, but you have to want to read a lot about the Joker. It's obviously because it's called the Joker Omnibus. <laughs> so for those of you who want to sort of fill in, and this is good, this is the uh, anniversary issue that has a story by Doug Munch and um, um, with this famous cover, I think that's Sienkiewicz. Um, or, wait, no. Yeah, I think this is Sienkiewicz. Um, so... This is a book for those of you who want to get to know the Joker better from when he was um, uh, less murderous, still evil, not quite um, as, as deeply layered as he is now, but still a murderous and capable enemy for Batman. As I said, it was a bridge from uh, a bridge from goofy Joker to modern day Joker. So this has been uh, Omnidog. Thank you for watching. Please leave comments and I'll answer them. And please feel free to subscribe and hit the like button. And peace and love, peace and love. Thank you for watching.